Okay, questions for Coach. Coach, with the pads on, you see the physicality you want to see from your group? I think so. Obviously, there's always uh, room to grow, but, but these guys have had a physical camp on both sides of the ball. Certainly, it starts up front. Uh, really doing a nice job, you know, taking the next step each day. There's so much talk about how you guys can use Gavin in different ways. What's your experience with playing two quarterbacks at the same time? Can you get them both on the field in, in certain formations, that kind of stuff? I think so. You know, I think, again, I think you were able to see during, during that last practice uh, some of the things he's able to do. I think he's one of the best ball carriers we have as well. So it's it's on us to be creative, um, you know, making sure it's it's a package he can handle, but he can also handle going in and being the full-time quarterback if needed there. And, and it's something we're working on. With, with, with such a couple of conference games so early in the schedule, does that change any way the, the way you approach camp? It's a great question. I, I think it does. It absolutely does. I think for us, not as much of how we approach it with our players, but certainly from a staff standpoint, staying ahead um, of our self scouts. And uh, we would like to, you know, by the end of the summer, put away uh, some of those game plan thoughts for week two, week three, so we can quickly get back to them and certainly have a lot of those game plans in so we can be practicing some of those things towards the end of the camp. What's the rule change letting analysts and all the volleyball? Does that help you install now? I know you brought some guys with you who are more familiar with your odds. What the difference does that make? Yeah, I, th I think it's huge. You know, I've been super blessed. We, uh, you know, we got a guy by the name of Derek Shea, who was the tight ends coach at Marshall last year. He's a guy that could easily be a position coach in the SEC and all those things. And, and uh, Taylor Colst, he's a guy we brought. And uh, Andrew Verbois and Drake. I mean, there's, there's four or five guys there that, that are guys that could be position coaches in other places. So, so we feel blessed. We're adding these guys. Um, we're able to have them coaching. We're able to have them out there. Uh, give more one-on-one, -on -one, if you will, with positions, and that's been a plus. Fred Ferrier is a guy who made a bunch of plays when we were out here Saturday, and I know he played well in the spring, but is he a guy that surprised you a little bit just since you've got him here? No, I don't know if surprise is the right word. I just think it's so interesting for so many of these guys. As you know, it's, it's the football part of it, and it's that consistency over intensity day in and day out. Fred's one of those guys that I'm not necessarily mentioning in the media every day. And, and I think for him, uh, he's been able to just put his head down and go to work for three, four months. And I think he, of all the guys on this offensive roster, is a guy that, that we have uh, been tremendously proud of for those reasons. His situation might not be exactly what he wants it to be right now, but he's working like he's the number one guy. And as you know, you got to be ready when your numbers call. Which there's been a lot of talk about the helmet problem, but the tablets. What can that help you with on game day and maybe what was your experience working with those when you're in the NFL? Yeah, I, I think it can be certainly um, certainly uh, a huge plus, um, but we got to be efficient with it. You know, sometimes, as you guys know, in between drives, there's only uh, sometimes four or five, six minutes. And so you can't necessarily be on those tablets taking forever. The communication's got to be in sync. Uh, we're putting a plan together, whether that what needs to be known right now and what, what can maybe wait. Uh, for another drive or two, and so we're going to definitely use that on Saturday. Uh, try to get a good trial run, if you will, for that, so we can be ready for game one. When you were in the NFL, were the tablets allowed then, or did they come in after? They were. Now we could only get the pictures, so a lot of times for for the quarterbacks, you know, you'd have that time to sit with them and just show some of the views. But uh, you know, I think the video is going to be a game changer in a lot of ways. Again, as you know, it's how, how can we communicate in a way where it's simple, clear, and concise. And uh, those, we, we all know what the tablets do to our personal lives, so hopefully it doesn't distract <laughs> us like that. So. Jason Patterson was a guy that kind of was a big name in the spring. How, how have you seen him progress? Uh, I think he's in that same old of Fred Ferrier. You know, he's kind of one of those guys that's been quiet, continually working. I think I remember in, uh, in July, he used to be in my office, he would have his pads on just getting catches on these jugs machines here at about six o'clock at night. And so that's a guy, he doesn't say a whole lot. Um, again, I've said this, we always know what those upperclassmen guys are, the guys that we do a lot of media coverage with, but it's those younger guys who can step in and know what they're doing with a little bit less experience that are gonna be game changers for us. Anybody else? Uh, Kamari good? Anderson is a guy that we've heard pretty great things about so far this offseason. How's he looking through practice, and what's the path to him getting on the field on Saturdays? Just consistency. I mean, he's certainly one of those guys. He's got all the ability in the world. He's got size. He's got athleticism. Uh, certainly at that position, you know, it's going to take consistent brand of ball, playing and play out. But he's a guy we're looking to really get going this year.
Anyone else? All right, thank you. Thank